I'd like to call this regular council meeting of December 6th to order. Uh, we have uh, three public hearings today. And we're going to go into the first one here in a second. Yeah, I'll declare a comment that I should before we go into the public hearings as I run vacation. And I will as well as the solicitor in relationship. Okay. Uh, the first public hearing has to do with the zoning amendment bylaw number 2148, vacation rental at 424 3rd Street East. This public hearing is being convened pursuant to section 464 of the Local Government Act. At this public hearing, the public will be allowed to make representations to council, and all persons present who believe their interests are affected by the proposed bylaw shall be given the opportunity to address council or to present written submissions respecting matters contained in the proposed bylaw. Those of you who wish to speak concerning this proposed bylaw should commence your address to council by clearly stating your name and address. Then you may give us the benefit of your views concerning the proposed bylaw. Please observe the rules. If you have any concerns with the manner in which the hearing is conducted, direct your comments to the chair. Members of council may, if they wish, ask questions of you following your presentation. However, the main function of council members today is to listen to the views of the public. It is not the function of council at this public hearing to debate the merits of the proposed bylaw with individual citizens. Everyone shall be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard at this meeting. No one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making his or her views heard. In considering the proposed bylaw, council has received documents which may influence its decision. These documents are available for review in a binder located at the sign-in table. Uh, this opening statement is uh, going to apply to the next two public hearings as well, and I'd like to ask the corporate officer to confirm that all due process was followed according to the Local Government Act. Yes, Your Worship, <coughs> 424 3rd Street East, we did receive public submissions, five, um, and five were opposed. One letter from the property owner explaining his intentions. Okay. Uh, I do have a uh, speaker's list set up, and uh, I have uh, names of people who wish to speak. I will be going out to the public for a minimum of three times, and people can uh, and get up and uh, speak as much as they'd like, as long as the subject that they're talking about is different each time. So before we get started, I'd like to uh, ask Mr. Strachan, do you have a uh, short presentation for us? Just very briefly, your worship. First public hearing is called 424 3rd Street. Thank you, Worship. So, looking at the um, speakers list, the applicants are here and, uh, and has, have indicated that they wish to speak. So, uh, Bryce uh, Dobbin, you, are, you have the podium, sir. Would you come up to the podium to state your name and your address, please? My name is Bryce Dolan. My address is uh, 801 Temple Street, and the address we're applying for is 424 3rd Street East. And I'm Bryce's partner, Ashley Bortlace. <coughs> uh, we are the property owners of 424 3rd Street. Uh, I'm originally from New Zealand. Uh, first came to Canada 10 years ago, and we met Ashley here in Riverstoke. We've lived here for the last eight years. <coughs> Ashley, uh, Ashley and I bought this house in May for a long term rental, and at present, that still may be the plan. However, upon notice of the capping of the availability for vacation rentals, we have applied for the rezoning and we would like the option of short-term rentals. I'd like to commend the Council for the structure and regulations of the rezoning bylaws, of which I believe are geared towards maintaining the existing commercial business revenue, protecting neighbours from year-round operations, and also places some regulations on short-term stays within the community. I'd also like to thank all of our neighbours for submitting comments and concerns. It was always nice to hear perspectives from the other side of the fence. And it was no intention of ours to upset or disrespect any of you. And this has been quite a stressful application for Ashley and myself. In response to some of the concerns within our neighborhood, a portion of these seem to be somewhat pre-existing issues and concerns, such as the Third Street parking and snow removal issue, which has been ongoing since I moved onto Third Street back in 2008. We plan to promote the new and existing services that provide transport to and from Riverstoke, such as the Colonial Airport to Riverstoke transfer and the new, this year, direct flights from Vancouver to minimise bringing guests, uh, bringing multiple vehicles to our, our rental. 
However, as per the application, parking for the guests will be at the rear of the property and there will be room for three spaces as per the council regulations. Snow removal, snow removal will be done by the means of a heated driveway to, to, to a soakage and storage pit to minimise any water runoff. Any additional snow removal will be done by Ashley here, who's been uh, doing the CrossFit quite often. <laughs> She's more than capable of the goal. She will also be managing the properties. Also notice most of the concerns are directed towards winter rentals, which mean which mentions sled rentals, uh, uh, sorry, sled trailers, snow removal, parking, parking, parking. That's a big concern. Of the 120 days a year of rental days that could potentially, some of those could potentially be through the summer, to families here for sporting events, timber days, glacier challenge baseball, hikers, mountain bikers, etc. Real Stoke summer of 2016 had an increase of 30% visitors and our house will be set up for these families, whether they be hikers, bikers, or here for the mountain coaster, which we can be sure to accommodate such a lot more comfortably than hotels with the usual amenities like a bike wash area, mud room, family room, and who doesn't like to have wine on a nice front porch. Just think of how great an experience would be for a guest if one of our neighbors stopped to chat and gave some history recommended some places to see and some background on Revelstoke. Most of the people who live in Revelstoke came here for a week and haven't left. And all we are trying to do is give these people an awesome Revelstoke experience. Sometimes it's easier to stop change and progression due to the perception that's related to that change. It's easier to put up a barrier or fence against it. However, I see the city of Revelstoke open and willing to embrace progression, change, growth, and then see and enhance the potential of our community. We hope the City of, the city of Rosso Council accepts our application as a positive progression for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next person that you indicated the way to speak is uh, Morton and Sharon Refuse. Mm -hmm. Or should I say more or sharing where you Yeah, that makes that <laughs> something that, that I think uh, we, we want in the neighborhood is a vacation rental. When I, when I talk to the, the couple that are doing this property, they um, indicated to me that this was strictly long-term rental, and now that has changed. Now, whether that's because the city's put pressure on them to, to change this to a vacation rental, or a lot, I'm, I'm not sure. But, um, just brings way too many problems to our, our neighborhood, and um, we we don't think it's it's a good thing for our neighborhood in general. Communities, towns, everything is, is built on different neighborhoods, and our neighborhood consists of a, a, a group of people who own their homes and live there, and we and we're, we're there for a reason, and that's because it's it's a great location for all of us. Has been for. The 41 plus years that Sharon and I have been living there. And, uh, and I think we kind of like to keep it that way. Uh, long term level um, could work out fine, but um, short term vacation rental is, is not something that we really want to do. Um, the other reason uh, is, the, is the parking problem, and that's consistent through everyone else in the neighborhood is, is the parking situation. Now, I know um, they. You know, Bryce indicates that they have three parking spaces in the back. Well, uh, 
maybe. I, I've looked at it. I, I can't imagine having three vehicles parked in, in, in the back of that property. Certainly not in the wintertime. So that means the street is where they're mostly going to park. And, and all we need is a bunch of snowmobiles coming into town with huge trailers and pickup trucks that will take up uh, at least the whole block. If, you know, and, and they'll park in front of my home, they'll park, park in front of the property next door, which, you know, Leon is planning on building a house on sometime in the near future. And um, it's, it's a 25-foot lot, so you can't, you can't do much on a 25-foot lot as far as parking can be. It's extremely difficult for snow removal in the wintertime, and, and it also creates a real dangerous situation, I think, with the traffic that comes up Vernon Avenue on a third street, and it's missing the window, and there's a huge big windrow of snow down the street. Um, there's, there's potential for some real problems. Um, I, the other thing that I'm, that I'm concerned about, we're concerned about, is that once this property is rezoned to vacation rentals, um, there's no turning back after that. That's my understanding of it anyway. I mean, it, a new owner of that property, uh, possibly the, the, the current owners, they may keep it as a long-term home, but the new owners, um, there's no saying what would happen. So, so I think we have to look at long-term on this, and, and, and the people in the neighborhood, I don't think, kind of deserve to have that inflicted on us, uh, that, that we can't really do anything about in the future. So, I'm hoping that um, we can convince you here this afternoon that um, this, this rezoning should not go ahead and that um, it should be maintained as either a residential or long-term rental property, but not to be a vacation rental. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon, is he done a good enough job or do you have to come up and say something too? No. You're okay? Uh, Jim Abramson has indicated he wishes to speak to Jim. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon. I'm not very good at but uh, my major concern is like I, in my time, I have to park my car on my front yard. So, is that a good rating aid protection? And people want to park right in front of my car. And so, as you say, we don't get snow removal. You know, they park on the sidewalk, well, same thing. And uh, what are they going to do? If he does go to a vacation rental, how are we going to stop people from having parties? I mean, they're skiers, they're going to party. Sledders, they're going to party. You know, that's my two big concerns because I've had people, you know, I parked in the front lawn. I've had people already park in front of my car and I can't get out. You know, my motion sick motion and anything happens, I've got to be able to get out and now. I can't have somebody park in front of my house and I can't find them. Um, I think work so said a few things about what my concerns are to the major is snow removal on the Thursday. So. Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, Jim Abramson, uh, 426 degrees. Very good. Uh, Sean Aquiline. Thank you, Your Worship Council. My name is Sean Aquiline. I live at 430 3rd Street East. I think more pretty much expressed a large majority of some of the issues that concern us, but some of them are that you did say once it's changed, it's changed. Now, Bryce might be fantastic at it, but at one point, if he ever sells the house, there's an issue down the line that can't be revoked. The parking in the back is, he's got a plan, it's great. More pace, personally, for the snow removal in the back. It doesn't necessarily affect me right on the corner, but being that I can't park, I don't have parking back there, neither does Jill beside me. So we're forced to park on the street. It doesn't take much to start clogging it up. And I don't think parking is a matter of saying no to change. It only has anything to do with that. I think it's about a reality of where we live. Jill's house to my property line is no more than four feet, less than four feet. 
And that's pretty much standard around town. And we all know that you're going to hear a lot of the same things on this street, the next street you're dealing with, a previous one that was that was up and was denied for the exact same reason. So we could go over a long list of those, but I think you already know where we're coming from. They said they're looking for a 30% increase coming in, and it's not just sleds. Okay, let's talk about the summertime. The one thing about Jerry living there previously was that you get to know your neighbor, you can talk to your neighbor, you work out your schedule. I know Jill's van, she knows my van. I know when Kathy gets up for work, I know her granddaughter is across the street. There's all sorts of things that are gonna be played into it. Safety is also one. There's a little girl that lives across the street. There is a new family that moved in across from me, I don't have their exact address, that have children playing. Now yes, they're not on the street, it has nothing to do with parking, but it's the overall concept of the reality and what Mort was talking about, about keeping what that was about in that neighborhood and having that family mentality. No, that's fine. I'm sure rentals will come in and some will be great and some will be respectful. I'm sure we've all rented houses somewhere in another neck of the woods, whether it's the lakes or wherever. And we respected those people's property. But summertime is just as much of an issue as it is in the winter. So that's fine. But baseball, Glacier Challenge. So they're down at Glacier Challenge and the parking has run all the way up the road. I have nowhere to park. I don't have a parking lot in my lot. The previous, previous owners sold that lit to the city. So I have one little patch of grass on the side that I can technically park on. Public Works turns a blind eye because there's nowhere else to go when the snow hits. Because then what that means is that Sean moves his van onto Vernon Ave, Jill moves her vehicle onto Vernon Ave, Jim parks on his grass, and the snow plow comes. All it takes is a couple of cars that are not aware of our schematics and how the snow removal works for them to go around at once, and then they have to come back around again at a later time. Two, by doing this, by approving it, it means their house, their property value goes up. That's fantastic. Or are they gonna be taxed based on that? So those are some of the concerns and issues that I have. I do know that there are obstacles if I wanna tear down my shed and rebuild back there. So with, with us not having the appropriate plans and approval to even build a garage for ourselves, this city's strong arming us to park in front of our own properties. And if you remove that, we've got a bigger problem because we're adding to the problem by blocking up Norbert's property over on Vernon Avenue. So we're just adding to the congestion with more congestion. So although that's going to be a probably large staple of what you're going to hear tonight is about parking, I don't think it has anything to do with say no to change. I, I think the long term is fine because you can work out parking schedules and arrangements with the neighbors that you know on a regular basis. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Thank you. Uh, the next person on the list that said they would speak is Leon Remus. Mayor and Council, uh, Leon and Jill Remus, we own the Bacon Lot at 423rd Street. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, I begin with uh, just congratulating uh, the owners, Bryce and Ashley, particularly right. here, uh, how they have improved the, 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 the building. Yeah, they've done a lot of work, so we're very happy about that. Um, our intention, uh, regardless of what happens here, is to be good neighbors with them, as we hope to be good neighbors uh, with the, uh, everyone else. I'm going to reiterate uh, some of our concerns uh, that everyone else's. Um, mentioned. I, I did submit a, a letter uh, to uh, the council and I believe you received it and, uh, and uh, mentioning some of our uh, concerns. Uh, vehicle traffic, we, we've discussed that. I guess part of the thing that my concern is that like many of us, we, we go to the place of least resistance. There might be uh, parking available in the back, but sometimes in the winter time, we have a tendency if there's a little bit more snow or, or whatever, to park on the street or just because it's not, it's not as easy. So the path of least resistance often means that uh, it affects other people just by your choice of parking. Um, partying, uh, I know uh, we've talked with Bryce and Ashley about uh, concerns and the after effects about that. They uh, you know, wanted to assure, uh, reassure us that they would know, have a handle on when looking at, after those things. But sometimes uh, while you're going through it that night or you know, if you can't get a hold of them, it's, it's, it's very frustrating to have to deal with someone that 
doesn't uh, uh, ever being as respectful as they possibly can. It's just you know, the issue of being able to monitor it. Um, really, the concern, I guess, is of the, uh, the uh, short-term vacation rentals, and, and even uh, in the summer where you might have a longer term, short term, is that revolving door uh, of, of people coming into your neighborhood that with little or no investment in the neighborhood. Uh, I think one of the, uh, the strengths uh, of this particular neighborhood, in fact, it's uh, part of the heritage zone, which has a long history in and of itself, is that there is a uh, continuity, continuity of people that have stayed there and lived there and built relationships. So if you do have issues, with uh, your neighbor, or you, you want to know who your neighbor is, you can you can actually go and speak to them uh, just because of the fact that they're, they're living there. Um, we're for uh, long-term rentals. In fact, that was the, uh, I believe that what what was uh, going to be happening. And I understand where Bryce is, is sharing the, the, the feeling of being caught in between the not applying and, and not uh, and then not being able to apply, but I guess my question is, is if you're concerned about uh, not applying for uh, short-term rental and your focus is still long-term rental, why do you even bother uh, apply for short-term rental to begin with? Um, it would seem to me that uh, if long-term rental is your focus, then uh, being here for even an application for a short-term rental uh, is not acceptable. It just doesn't seem to follow my line of reasoning anyway in that. So uh, um, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, I would hope that uh, we could find a happy medium where there and where we recognize that long-term rentals are, are positive and uh, that we can continue to build on the relationships that already exist in that. So thank you very much. So the next person I have on the list is, uh, I, I think, uh, John Warren, but I think, John, you put your name down on the wrong yes. show, but I had to ask you. So I, I've already transferred your name over to the next public hearing. Uh, the next person on the list that indicated wish to speak is Jill Zacharias. <coughs> Thanks, Mark. So uh, just to give you kind of a schema, so far, you've heard from Mort, Leon, they're beside the, the proposed vacation rental, very, very close to it. Jim, Abramson's place is like five feet away from the proposed vacation rental, and it's a 25-foot lot. Jim's against it, and then we're another three or four feet down. So the proposed vac vacation rental is 25 feet from my front door, and then Sean from Kirsten. So all of the neighbors on that side of the street are opposed. Happens directly across the street. And, you know, the people who lived there uh, before, like Bryce and Ashley, could be really conscientious uh, property owners, but they've purchased the property with never any intention to live there. They are own a house on the temple, which is their primary residence. So uh, it's obviously an investment, so, and they've done a fantastic job of fixing up the place. It looks really great, and it's good to see the neighborhood improve it. But it's obviously an investment. So they could be re really good landlords for the vacation rental, but they, might, they probably want to sell it in a couple of years. So, and then we're going to have to deal with this again and again and again. And every single time it snows, it's this dance of we all have to move our vehicles. Because if we don't get plowed out, we don't have parking in front of our house and groceries, skis, whatever you want. We, we, have to have, we need to have access to our properties. In 2012, David and I uh, went and we spoke planning department about building a carport in the back. And they said our, our, our property is too small. Same with Sean and Kirsten wanting to tear down their shed and build a little garage. Can't do it, the property is too small. So they, they're going to fit three cars in the back. And 
they just, you know, we we also own another property that has parking in the back, and it's we and park and parking is on 25 feet, and you can only fit two cars back there. And we cleared the snow and we put it on the rest of our property. If there's any snow to be cleared, they can't put it on Leon's, they can't put it on Jim's, they can't put it in the U group parking lot, they can't put it in Audi because everybody pays privately to remove the snow in the back. The city doesn't file the out. So their snow is going to cost, if they put it in the Ubru parking lot, it's going to cost those guys money to take away their snow. And it's great to hear that it's going to be heated, but we get a three-foot snowfall or a two-foot snowfall. They're going to have to remove the snow before, and they will not have any place to put the snow. So this, like already, it's the parking, as you can hear, is somewhat stressful for it, for us all. But we all mitigate it by talking to our neighbors, by developing those relationships, which are established over time. Jerry and Shirley lived in that little house for 15 years before these guys bought it. And the, the uh, a guy before that, Dave, and his three kids, he lived there for nine years. We've lived in our house for 24. So I just, you know, this is going to have a huge impact on our lives. And we appeal to you to consider that long-term impact. Thank you. Thank you. So I've gone through the uh, speakers list, and the uh, floor is open for anyone from the public that wishes to speak on this uh, Zoning amendment bylaw number 2148, which is 424 Third Street East. The floor is open. Thank you. I'm Stephanie Melnick. I live at 406 Robson Avenue. Um, I think it's unfortunate that the vacation rental application process has been a little bit um, blindsiding for applicants. I think there's some room for a collaborative conversation to be had so that we can find some kind of middle ground. You know, I understand the process is also very narrow in scope because we only have so many options as far as rezoning goes. But in the interest of collaboration, I approached Ms. Bordley so that we could talk about what her intentions are, look at the bigger context of what she and Bryce are looking for, and then what the neighborhood needs are. So in doing that, we did find quite a bit of common ground, actually. But um, you know, most of the concerns are around some logistics, the parking, some removal, that kind of thing. But also worries about the longer term implications, that if there's a rezoning, it's quite permanent. And then that way, uh, we've opened a can of worms. We don't know what's going to happen down the line. So although we might have a lot of confidence in the current owners, the only structure that's available right now is a rezoning, which, like I said, is quite permanent. Um, so Ms. Borlais and I feel like it, it would be wonderful if there was some opportunity to attach the vacation rental status to the applicant, which then would be dissolved upon sale of the property. And I know that doesn't exist right now, but um, looking at a non-transferable vehicle to still allow current applicants to achieve the investment opportunity that they're looking for might be some kind of middle ground that could work better. So I'm just asking that as we move forward with the vacation rental process, we look at potentially a more proactive approach. Um, I do understand that the business license layer uh, will provide a little bit of, um, I guess, remediation should the vacation rental not be well managed, but uh, that is more of a stick than a carrot. And so a, a proactive approach, I think, would sit well with everybody, opponents and applicants alike, and potentially not put their own counsel so much in the middle of having to make this judge and jury decision. Uh, the other concern that I had was around the impacts on the rental market. And so I have spoken to Mr. Strachan about this, which I really appreciate, because he was able to give me a little more context that I didn't have. Um, but much of my work in the community involves supporting people who are either struggling or in crisis, and for most people, having some kind of reliable housing gives them the stability to move forward in their lives. So it's, it's a very big piece of my work, and uh, I'm not entirely sure what the impact is of vacation rentals on the housing and specifically the rental market. Um, 
Yeah, I do understand that there's a balancing effect um, that may exist where there have been a number of illegal vacation rentals, and now that the legalization process is happening, those will transfer over into either legalized in the uh, 125 beds that are available, or else they would be put back into long-term rental housing stock, which would be great. Um, but I would like to know how, um, how many of those illegal suites or rentals are going back into long-term housing. That would provide a great level of um, reassurance to me, especially in my work in the community. Um, also looking at the housing continuum that we have in Revelstoke and then I guess the accommodation continuum where with accommodations we need to have a certain number of vacation rentals. There are people who are going to want to vacation in Revelstoke and will only want to come for a vacation rental experience. And I think that the 5% of um, the equivalent of 5% of our hotel beds as vacation rentals feels about right for the percentage um, that we would have. But again, if we had an overarching view of what the housing continuum looks like, you know, knowing that we're missing emergency housing, we're missing supportive housing, we're missing a lot of uh, affordable housing, of um, below market value housing and apartments, or at market value apartments, all we really have are single family dwellings at market value. And so without having that bigger context of our housing continuum, then it feels uncomfortable for me to move forward with the vacation rental process knowing, or not knowing how that fits into the housing continuum. Um, other than that, I just wanted to say that I definitely uh, support Ms. Borlase as an applicant. After having a conversation, I definitely feel like there is some middle ground, and unfortunately, the current vacation rental options, um, being a rezoning, um, don't really fit the solution that any of us are looking for. Also, it's unfortunate there are two rental spaces in that property because then they might qualify for the subcategory of vacation rentals. Um, just having part of the property as a vacation rental, that would probably provide a lot of reassurance to the, uh, the direct neighbors. Um, but if in the future um, there is a re-examination of this property, should it not be approved today, I would definitely recommend that um, this property be re-examined with a different context or different opportunities that might be available for them. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, comments or questions from Council on anything so far? You can make your way up to the podium, sir, if you like. Sure. Um, for us to open the applicant between four so I can make a, uh, address a few concerns again. Um, Riverslope is a changing city and we would like to short term rental wherever we can. Um, as to the uh, approved vacation rentals that can be sold, I mean, we're not opposed to having the option of the vacation rental be non transferable. Uh, I know that's currently not the case, but if it were, that's, uh, we wouldn't mind that by any means. Um, the property we purchased had rented in for the last 18 years and uh, as a landlord there's no deciding whether you get a long term renter or a short term renter in it. That renter can move out whenever so it's, it's not always, you don't always choose, get to choose the, the right candidate. So. Uh, I'd also like to reiterate the somewhat pre-existing issues of 3rd Street, a lot of snow removal issues, parking. We're not introducing any new issues here, um, we're actually helping taking out some of the parking because um, and putting in a heated driveway will solve some of that. I'd like to present a photo, if I may, um, of the parking in behind our in behind our property here. As you'll see, there's two cars parked there, a full-size truck and a car with no problem. And side by side, you can fit four cars in there, no problem. So, as far as we're concerned, it's, it's not going to be an issue for for the neighbours or anyone out the front there. Um, 125, 120 days of the year, so it's not going to be full term anyway. So that you, you have put some good limitations on that to protect the neighbours. We feel that's pretty fair. Um, parking as per the regu regulations. Uh, we've invested a significant amount of money in most local businesses over the last six months in renovating this place. And we're quite proud of that. And the last thing we want to see is someone coming in and destroying any of that. So we, uh, we're hoping this application gets approved for you. Thank you. Thank you. The floor is open for anyone from the public that wishes to speak to this uh, zoning amendment bylaw. Oh, oh, oh. 
right up the wall. <laughs> I've been pressured, and uh, they had said, well, sir, about the parking and stuff. I'm more concerned about noise. I get up at 4 a.m. to go to work in the morning. Uh, I don't want to be woken up at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning with a bunch of yahoos out there screaming and yelling, because my concern is, do I phone the police, or should I just phone one of you guys? I mean, are you phone it in, it's your baby. Why should I waste taxpayers' money for the police over parties, right? And also, the uh, plan I see, and I see one bathroom for six to eight people, that doesn't make any sense. I, myself, my seven-year-old granddaughter, want to see somebody urinating over the deck. Like, that's just not right. So, I mean, those are my concerns. And the parking, of course, because we're always blocked in. Even where I live. We park in our yards in the winter, ruin our yards, just so you guys can plow it at nice. That's a busy road. Right? I mean, so we all park where we can. You start lining up snowmobiles and sleds. Where's the plows going to put the snow? Where are they going to, they're going to plow it into our yards where we don't want them to be. We shovel enough. I get up four in the morning just to shovel to get up to the uh, work. So those are my concerns. The noise, the parking, can one bathroom. I just don't agree with that. Not with seven to eight, or six to eight people in there. I mean, we have four in our house and we have two bathrooms and that's still not enough. So, those are my concerns. And if you wish to phone any of my counselors at any time of the day or night, feel free. Speed stop. <laughs> <laughs> just, just on that, we actually plumbed in a secondary bathroom, dropped it in. Uh, the floor is open. Uh, Sean, I do. I have a concern about. Parking in the back. I think it's great that it's heated, like Jill said. I think they he showed the picture of parking. I can show you a picture of me parking the same way in my own backyard. My question is, does that mean that me and Jill then have to apply to become vacation rentals in order to get a small garage put in our own lot to put in our own vehicles? Because if they can do that, then something needs to be easier for me and Jill to to be able to park our vehicles and still have room for our snow machines and everything else that needs to happen. So you can't just say yes to that and then say no to Jill and I who would want to go, even if it was a one car port for our, and I have a bigger lot than them. So which, where do we go from here? Well, I was just gonna say that, you know, we're, we're mixing up things a little bit here, but yeah. what you should be doing and same as Jill is you should be going down the planning department and asking what your options are because you know, there's, there's development variance applications that could be done. There's all kinds of things that could be done if you have problems. But I would just encourage you to go down and, and see Dean and the planning department and talk about those issues because I, there's, we have to uh, look at the situation and when you got a 25 foot lot, it doesn't seem unreasonable that you, you can't have a garage. Well, we, Mr. Schreiber, do you want to add to that? Your Worship, we're reviewing what we have for properties as well as our bylaws that are in place. We certainly should have that discussion. It certainly wasn't asked of me in the past three years, it may have been previous, um, but uh, that would not be my response at this point in time. Okay. I just don't want to spend a little uh, time on a public hearing on talking about the, the side. It's a side issue. I would just encourage you, and if uh, uh, Ms. Zacharias would like to go down and, and inquire, I that would be the appropriate thing to do. Okay. Uh, going out to the public for the, a second time again, is there anyone that wishes to speak to the Zoning Amendment Bylaw for Vacation Rental 424 3rd Street East? My name is Brian Fulton. I live on Cardi Crescent in, here in Ravistoke. And uh, I've been involved in this <coughs> issue before with neighbors and my concern, and part of the reason I'm here today, is just is to find out why applications get to this point and they're already a problem. I, I think when a person is considering a property for a vacation use, they, they should be given all the information they need to make sure that, this, that the, the by the change in zoning that they're acquiring won't adversely affect the existing neighborhood. I mean, that's what all this is about. It's, it's about being good neighbors. And, and I don't know this couple. They sound like they're doing a fantastic job. But 
listening to all of their neighbors, I mean, he, you can't make that snow disappear. That, that, that's a foregone conclusion. And so what I'm seeing happening throughout the city is that a person or a group gets an idea on a property and they try to shoehorn it in to the existing community. And, it, and it's, kind of, it's like hammering a, a square peg into a round hole. It, it, sometimes it just doesn't work. And I, I, think, I think the work that needs to be done is prior to the acquisition of the property, if, if that's what your intended use it is going to be down the road. So if you need parking for four vehicles, you know, you might need an 80 foot wide lot or a whatever, whatever it, whatever it takes, or a deeper driveway or something. And I, I don't think it's fair to people that have invested in their community and expect uh, a certain level of, of existence and then have someone come in and and totally uh, upheave that. I mean, I, I've seen it where houses, I mean, you can't drive to the ski hill coming up that hill without seeing a house that's being run as a hostel. And there's there's often 20 cars in the driveway. I'm talking about Airport Road, just as you come around that first corner up past the Yellow Silver Bridge. And I can't imagine what it's like for the people that are on both sides that are stuck there. They're, they've got their homes and they're either living beside a motel or a nightclub. And, and, and oftentimes it's both. So, and I mean, that isn't a vacation property, but it, it doesn't matter. It's the impact on the people that are already invested in the community. And I, I don't think it's fair to, to, up, to totally turn that upside down. And, and I get it that when it snows, he's got four cars on that lot. But there's no way, if, the, if we get a, a, a typical uh, Revelstoke winter, that it's going to look like that come you know, mid-January. So, I, like I say, I'm, what, what I'm kind of tired of seeing is our, our inappropriate properties for this use trying to be shoehorned in to the existing community. What, whatever that type or, um, of community might be. That's all I have to say. to the public again for any comments on this vacation rental zoning amendment by a lot. Well, before you start, Brian, what is your street address? 1089. Okay, thank you. And your new address, sir? Uh, Andy Siegel. I'm at 503 3rd Street East. I can see the property from my house. Um, I'd just like to uh, pretty much follow up on what Brian said. Actually, I know the owner, one of the owners of this house, Bryce, he's a great guy. He'll be a great landlord, regardless of what happens there. We're lucky and glad to have him in the neighborhood, at least in my opinion. But uh, just to kind of follow up on what Brian said, uh, I, I totally agree that um, I hope that this town and the, the council and everyone who runs this town will take into account that uh, hopefully maybe setting a precedent, whether it's for this property or other ones, um, to not turn Revelstoke just into one big vacation rental. Because uh, I think in the certain areas and locations of the town, it's definitely a good idea. And people should have the right when they buy a property to invest and get certain returns on it if they want, but it's got to be in the right location and area. And I'm just not so sure that especially the downtown core location is a spot that you want to start turning into vacation rentals. Um, I know from personal experience from owning a condominium somewhere else where it was all owners when I moved in, it's just a small little complex with eight units. And uh, it was a totally different scene and then all of a sudden years later everyone sold out and went to vacation rentals and uh, I'm just not so sure that people understand here who might be approving these projects that 
if you've ever experienced living next to a vacation rental. Because the thing is, uh, a lot of the time it can be totally fine, everything's good. But what you don't realize is people come in at all hours of the night sometimes. One thing I just remember is uh, people having to take flights or leave at different times and they didn't care. They'd be checking out sometimes at four in the morning and they'd be like, don't they understand? It's like you should pull your bags off the stairs, but they would just drag them up and down the stairs. So vacation renters are not always so considerate when you've got good neighbors like Karen across the street or after work at four in the morning. Those people don't take into account that these people are supporting their families and that's what they're here for. So um, I just hope people would realize that the parking, that's a whole other issue. Well, those four people that are staying in that vacation rental, they might have four people coming by to stop by who are staying in town. And then they park in front and it happens to be right when the plow is coming by. All our neighbors know to run out and move their cars and make room for the plows, but these people don't do it. So if those piles don't go at the right time and those frozen chunks of ice stay there, it can make our you know, neighborhood not a good place to be. So I just think there's a lot of things to uh, consider with the vacation rentals. It's not just the parking, it's the noise, it's the friends that come by. Um, I would suggest maybe a happy medium somewhere in between like monthly rentals where people aren't checking in and out all the time. You can still make you know, better money off your rentals there's a market for it, and it's just a lot less turnover. Because when you have that turnover constantly in and out, that's what is not going to make the neighborhood happy. And plus, it can be just a lot of different people coming in and out. Um, you know, we have a great core neighborhood there. I've been there 10 years, and uh, hopefully we can keep it the same. You know, just yesterday, my neighbors came out with a little Christmas gift from their kids, and a great place to be and I'm not so sure they're going to want to stay there if they see who knows what across the street. So most of the vacation rentals can be okay, but the bad ones can really ruin things. So I would just implore this committee to um, consider that because it really changed that neighborhood. Certain other areas maybe, but right there, you guys know where the house is. It's just tucked right in. So. Um, that's about it. Like I said, we're lucky to have Bryce. He's a great, great landlord, I think. Lucky addition in the neighborhood, but as I told him, maybe uh, monthly rentals or something else. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Any comments from council or staff? Going back out to the public for a third and final time for any comments on this zoning amendment bylaw for Third Street East. Seeing none, I'm looking for a motion to close this public hearing. Councilor Nixon, Councilor English, all those in favor, the motion is carried. Your Worship, I'll bring forward the zoning amendment bylaw 2148 be read a third time. Motion by Councilor Nixon, seconded by Councilor English. Discussion of the motion. Uh, Your Worship, uh, I appreciate this young couple coming forward and renovating a house that really needed renovating. And uh, I'm not going to vote in favor of the rezoning to a vacation home. I think it can make a nice long term care, long term rental. <laughs> and uh, I uh, see that there's work to be done to help.